Hi friends, this is Melanie with FairyStampland.com. I'm back to you today with another Heartfelt Creations video. This one is featuring the Garden Lily Collection that was just released recently. And when I started playing with this collection, and this was my first card I created with it, I fell in love with making these lilies. I learned a couple tips and tricks along the way, and I thought I would share them with you. Um, this collection comes um, with three stamp sets and three coordinating die sets and a beautiful paper pack. And they also come with a brand new stamen pack. Now, because of the timing of the recording of this video, I do not have the actual packaging for the product. So I can't show them to you, but they are currently released. So make sure to head to heartfeltcreations.us on the web to check all of the products out in their entirety. Now, let's um, take a real close look at the detail of these lilies here. They are so detailed and I am going to focus today on teaching you how to make them. I'm just in love. Um, all the foliage here, the leaf and the little the scrolls behind it and everything, all the foliage is part of this collection. So we're gonna be using that as well. And um, I'm gonna be using, the only extra thing we're using is the Lattice, the Lattice Flourish Gateway die. Um, this die came back out a couple years ago and it's a full it has a full collection of gateway dies that come with it. I'm sure a lot of you already have it. Um, we're gonna make a shaped card, the card opens on the left and I've just simply finished it in the inside. Um, so let's set that aside and excuse my dog barking in the background. So I have cut a piece of paper here, approximately 10 and a half by seven and a half and I've folded it in half. You're gonna use the largest die in the die set and you're gonna hang this edge over as you tape it down and run it through your die cut machine. This is gonna prevent cutting this edge right here so that you preserve that fold line. And you're gonna end up with a card base that looks like this. Now, I always cut a second one completely so that I can put it directly on top and glue that so that I get the full design here on the side. Um, that makes your card really sturdy to hold the flowers. It also gives you the full shape of the card and it hides your fold line. So um, let's go ahead and attach that. Then I use that same die again and I use a piece of the coordinating paper that comes with the collection, which the paper with this collection, you guys are going to love. I do have some of that to show you at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around and I will show you that and one extra sneak peek sample that I have created with this collection. So I have done that. I have cut an extra piece just of green here of um, from the card pack itself from the Garden Lily collection. And we're gonna go ahead and put that one on as well. I decided to stick with just the basic um, traditional way that this die was intended to be used because my focus with this card is the lilies themselves. This video, that's my focus. So we are building this card exactly the way this die was intended to be used. So now we have a simple open and close shaped card. Easy peasy. Okay, so next what you're gonna do, and this is probably the trickiest part of my instructions online, and I didn't do the instructions justice, so I'm glad I am gonna to get to show you the instructions because what you're gonna do here is you're gonna tape all the pieces of the die 
all together. And you're gonna also tape the outline as well. Now I have pre-done this to make it easier so that you guys can see. And you wanna use a lot of tape here because you don't want these dies shifting when you're in the die cut machine because they can damage your dies if they try to die cut each other, if they slip on top of each other. So I do like to secure them down really well because you've got four dies here going through the machine at once. I do use a metal shim because this die here is very intricate, as you can see across here. And of course your gate die has all that lattice there. So when you run this through the die cut machine, you run it on white paper and you also run it on silver, you will get these two pieces. And I have done this twice. And I'm gonna adjust this camera just a little bit. See if I can adjust it just a little bit so you have a little more view there. Sorry if it jilted just a little bit, but I wanna make sure you can see the whole card base. Um, and what I've done here, this piece comes out, the fence pops out when you, when you die cut it. This piece here cuts in. And then your inside piece here just cuts this little die here, cuts this piece out. So you get two pieces when you cut all of these together. And then I've simply just glued the Silver Lux cardstock right behind there, just offsetting the silver just a little bit. So it both makes it sturdier and it also gives it a luxury look. And you can do that with the silver, the gold. I've also used other colors of foil before as well. And it looks just, you know, it just changes your um, project look a little bit and, you know, gives it a whole different feel, but it still gives you that luxury feel and it also makes your card more sturdy. So you're going to glue down this back piece totally to your card base, like so, with the regular dry clear glue. So we will do that real quick. I like this die because it gives you a nice thick outline for your glue. Um, I still use the metal tip anytime I'm using my dry as clear glue because it just it, it makes applying so much easier because I like to get like these little tips. Um, I don't like these little things sticking up. So I, I like the little details being done. Um, just to secure it down. I don't want, you know, someone opening my card and um, the little edges, you know, catching on the envelope or the box. So I like to make sure it's secure. And this metal tip helps that. So we're gonna secure this right on top. Look how pretty that is. How quick and easy. And it makes for such a luxurious looking card base. And then for the fence, I have added the 3D foam tape. These strips are available on Heartfelt Creations website. And they pop this fence up so well. They're really, really good for die cuts being able to get into the little areas of die cuts. I use them quite a bit. And put this right on top. Oh, there's a little hair. That tape. Put it right on top there and it just gives your card some dimension. Almost looks like a royal gate, doesn't it? There we go. Got those little things in the trash. Then I've done the same exact thing with the sentiment. The sentiment also comes with the die set. And I've done the silver behind the white. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue that in as well. I love that the die set comes with its own sentiment. But of course you could stamp anything in here um, or use any sentiment that you have in your stash, which is really nice that it gives you that space for the sentiment. But like I said, I just wanted to make this card Focus on the lilies themselves. <laughs> My little Dior's 
is wanting to be a part of the video. He's determined. I don't know what he's talking about, but he's determined to be a part of this video. Okay, so we will put that right down here in the center. Alrighty, let me look at it, make sure it's straight. Yep, it looks straight. Okay, so we've got our card base. I'm not gonna worry about the inside today. Um, that's pretty simple and you can you know design it and finish it off however you see fit. Now for all the extras, um, I have got some of it prepared and some of it not. Um, I've got, let's see. We've got some of these flowers that we're gonna color up. I've stamped some of the, um, so I'll show you the different sizes that they come in. These are the different sizes of the stamps. You've got three different sizes of lilies. Um, I like the, the three different sizes and, and I actually used all three sizes here. Um, you've got the small one here and I've used two in each, in each flower. So you've got the two small, the two medium and the two large. Um, and I've used five flowers all together. So that shows you how they're done on the stamps. So for the coloring of these, I've stamped for the white lilies, I've stamped them in new sprout memento ink. Let me find my daubers. Where did they run to? There we go. And for this one here, I've used buttercup. And we're gonna use the new sprout in the centers of all of them. So use your stack and store daubers and just give each of the centers a light green in the center. This is the easiest coloring. And then for the buttercup, just on the yellow flowers, we're gonna use the tip of our dauber. So the corner, you wanna use just the, just the corner. You wanna use the tip of the dauber. And you're gonna just come from the center and come up. You don't have to go all the way to the tip, but you wanna come up just, and go slow, cause you don't wanna get the whole petal yellow. You wanna try to go for a center line there. And it, and it can just be a hint. It doesn't have to be a lot. And I'll show you why in a little bit when we finish off the coloring. So you just want to go for a little hint of yellow coming up from the center by utilizing that corner of the dauber. Hopefully you can see that, what I'm doing. Oh, it's hard when my hand's in the way. This will all make sense here in just a little bit. Why I'm not going all the way. Now on the white lilies, we're not gonna do any more coloring because the white lilies, the green is there more of a shadow, for a shadow than anything else. I want the white lilies to look white. So we're gonna leave them just like that. And you will put the coordinating die on those and you will run those through your die cut machine. I, on these little ones, I usually use my Gemini Mini actually, cause it's just real quick. Um, but you will die cut those out and actually, um, and run, you'll run those through your die cut machine and your 3D mold. And once you do your 3D mold, because on these, I don't ink the edges any. So usually, you know, on flowers, I ink the edges, but on these, I don't ink the edges any. So when you put them through your 3D mold, You'll have them come out like so, and look at all the detail. I don't know if you can see that. You see the detail in them? 
So they've already got some of those ripples already in there, which I think is fascinating. I just love, and I actually did here, look, I did two at once. So that's the big lily. And then we got the medium lily here that we're gonna shape on camera. And then I've got two leaves in here too. Check the leaf out. I love the leaves in the 3D molds. So that's the main leaf that this set comes with. And then the other ones that we have with this set that are just mainly leaves. There's other background stamps, but these are the foliage ones. There's this swirl here. And then there's these two here. And for these, I'm not gonna color these on screen, um, but for this one here, well, actually for both of these, I inked these in um, leaf green. I stamped them in leaf green and I colored them in both leaf green and the um, the chrome, or no, the buttercup, buttercup. So I did a little bit of yellow and actually on these, I did yellow kind of highlights on the swirls. Um, and then I did some leaf green. And I might have put some of that new sprout in here too. Um, but I just tried to give it some kind of an ombre look to it. Um, but actually, we're going to completely glitter these. So it's going to it's gonna be concealed. So, I mean, it, that that's the reason um, yeah, it's not really really, really super important the way you color these. I just wanted to give you a you know, hint and tip of what colors I use, the leaf green and the, um, the buttercup are the main two colors here being used. Okay, so let's take these out of the shaping mold. And I use a Vagabond for my shaping molds. So uh, it's the same as a uh, Big Shot. So you just put a clear plate on top, clear plate on the bottom. And I noticed this, this um, is actually labeled Daylily on here, which I hadn't noticed on other ones before. I might be blind, but I had never noticed that before. So anyways, okay. So basic shaping and then a little extra shaping. We are gonna take our shaping mat and we're gonna rub their little bellies, as Liz says just to give them some give them some texture in the center. And then we're going to turn them over. I'm going to move this out of the way so we don't get it wet. We're going to turn these over and I'm going to give them a little spray of water. And we're going to take a golf tool. This I believe is the medium I think it's the second size. It's not the small, but it's the next one up. And on these, the trick is having them with the paper a little wet. I actually use two mats. You can buy a second mat, um, the heart, second mat on the heartfelt site just by itself. So if you already have a mat, um, I suggest getting another one. It's like three or four bucks. It's real cheap. And, but this makes it a lot easier than doubling it and pushing on it. So I always use two mats, especially with a golf tool, because when you push on the tip, you want to push straight down and then you want to pull and you want to see that wrinkle. You see that wrinkle? So you want to push straight down and then you want to pull. And you want to push straight down and pull. And then when you turn this over, take your, I think this is the six millimeter stylus and push in the center. And if you see here, you see the detail that that gives? Look at the line that it gives. It's such a beautiful extra detail to the petals. I just love the way that looks. So let's do these extra ones. But it's the depth of that push that makes all the difference. And if you're doing it with just one, you'll still get a line, but you won't get as deep of a crease. I, I just like the depth with two. 
um, pads better. Okay, two more little petals to go. Okay, then we'll use the push in the center of those. We're gonna take the other side of the golf tool and we're gonna punch a hole in the center. And because we're gonna use quite a bit of stamens in the center, I always slide this just a little bit to make a larger hole. That's what I like about these is they have a tapered um, barrel. That one's still a little wet, so I'm not going to push that one too much. Okay. So now our stamens, my glue gun is hot. The stamens are long and narrow. And I ran out of white ones. I mean, I'm sorry, I ran out of green ones. So we're gonna transform our white ones to green ones. And I will show you how really easily. I actually have done that here in this flower here. These were white ones and I changed them to green. And they're almost identical to these. These are just a little fuzzier, a little thicker but I think they'll they'll make do for our project until I get more stamens. Um, plus, if we glitter, we add glitter, they'll look fuzzier. So taking your dauber, this is the easiest and the neatest way I've found to do this. Just lay your stamen on there. I'm doing the sprout green again. I think that's, is it new sprout? New sprout. And just keep turning your turning your stamen. It inks your dauber up real well too at the same time. There you go. And just do that with each of them. You can do this with any of your white stamens, with any of your colors of ink. Normally I would use an archival ink and it would make it permanent. Um, I don't think it's really gonna matter in this case, but, um, but I wanted it to be as close to my first project as possible. So I went ahead and stuck with the new sprout. I really like this color. And I like the way the white flowers turned out using this color. I think I got the tip from Tracy Fair, our, one of our online educators. She made a different type of white flower. I don't remember which flower it was that she made, but it was a different white flower. It might've been a magnolia in one of her videos. And she used the new sprout. So when I saw the lilies, I was like, I remember how she made those white flowers, and so I tried it. And thank you, Tracy. Thank you for the idea. So there, we've got our green stamens. So those will be for these little, these little guys. So we have got, this is a medium one, and I chose to put five stamens in it. So we'll put those down in here. Remember, I didn't make the holes too, too big because it was wet. 
and I didn't want it ripping. See if I can get them in there. Yeah, there we go. Nice thing about the wire stamens is you don't have to put a wire around them like the threaded stamens, but you do want to keep your wires afterwards because your wires can be used with threaded stamens to make them easier to work with. So for these, what I do is, I, this one is still wet, I can feel it. <laughs> I douse this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and get this one on here, just so it's ready to slide up. Because we're gonna do a little shaping trick and I want it to get into the, the glue quickly. Okay, so now we're gonna put a glob of glue here. And I put a good fair amount here because, wee, I'm gonna push this one up, alternating the petals. Try not to burn myself. And then I'm gonna put it in my fingers and I'm gonna pull it up like this to dry. And this is gonna change it from a flat flower to a three-dimensional flower because it's gonna dry and it's gonna stay in this position. So let's just give it a second to go ahead and set. go. And remember, all flowers in nature are different. You know, you'll never find two that have the same petals exactly like it. So this one that has a petal folding down, that's completely okay. If you had a petal folding the other way, that's completely okay. Your stamens inside can go all different directions. That's completely all right. You can maneuver them however you want to. They can all be different because that's what nature is all about. You can actually, I like to pull that one out a little bit. Maybe bend it a little bit, yeah. So, yeah, so make it your own. Make each one of them a little different. Give them some character. We're gonna seal that one up right there. And I usually just sit it upside down to dry. Then we'll, on this one, I put three yellow and two brown or goldish. And these do have actual little pieces, little glitter on them already. Some of them in the pack do, I think, and some don't. So we'll do the same thing with this one. You know, before we do this, let me show you one other trick. And I almost forgot to tell you this. I'm glad I did the, glad I remembered. Taking this last little ink trick. I'm glad I remembered on this one because on the white one, I didn't do this. Just on the yellow, take the buttercup and fold this line here where your line was done and get the tip here and get your line. That's why I told you earlier you didn't have to go all the way because you finish it now when you have that end to go by. And then you get a much straighter line. See that? You get that definition. Isn't that amazing? I mean, you don't have to do this, but I think it makes that crease so much evident. I mean, it just makes it pop. If you look at lilies, they all have that crease down the center. There we go. That is another little tip for you. Just my way of doing it. It's not necessarily the right way. It's just my unique way. I'm sure everyone's gonna do it differently. And that's okay. Okay, that one looks like it might be ripping a little bit. So if we have to, we'll glue it on the back.
This one does too, actually. Let's hope it doesn't. And there's always a fix, but let's not. And it is. Okay. Let's see if we can fix this. Of course, it's going to blooper on TV, right? Okay. So I'm going to put a little tiny bit of glue right there and see if I can get this to go together first. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to get these two pieces to to seal there. Because then if this piece does get these together down here. Trying to get the bottom of the stamens together. Because this one doesn't look all that great either. They got wet too much in the middle. See. Okay. So, let's see if we can save it. We're going to put a hefty amount of glue under here. And hopefully, when they come together... Magic. Let's see. What you think? Think it's going to happen? I think with all that glue in there, hopefully it's going to all set together. And they'll never know. It's good to have an oopsie on camera, isn't it? Because it happens to all of us. A lot of times I try to get the broken one on the bottom instead of the top. Because they're much easier to fix on the bottom. The ones on the top are iffy. But the bottom flowers, you always can rip them apart and glue them on individually. But the top ones... But I, I caught that before it fell apart all the way. So let's see. Yeah. Well, let's see. And I see, I don't even know which one it is now. But I could, yeah, there, it's in there. Could add a little more glue in there. Just to be sure. There we go. We'll let that cool a little bit. I'll put some back down here too to seal this. And we'll let that dry. Can't even tell. Of course, you can spread those out. We can do that more later. We'll let that one cool. And this one is cool. So we will take it and slice the bottom. Okay, and these are the what I said don't get rid of. Save these. Because when you're using the um, these type of stamens, you can wrap these around and use this as your thread to thread them through. So make sure you keep these. They, they make it a lot easier than that really thin wire that people buy and use. Okay, so let's set that aside and while that one cools, we will do some glittering. So I'm doing all the glittering today with Rajni's Crystal Clear. This is actually, well, as of the recording time, this is back in stock. It's not going to help you by the time you get, by the time you get to see the video, because I'm recording so in advance. But hopefully it's still back in stock. So now some people glitter their flowers before they glue them on, and some people glitter them after they glue them on. I do, I, I try to glitter it before I glue them on the card, just because of the mess of all the glitter getting down in the card. But um, sometimes I forget. So in, in this card, I'm not glittering the leaves. 
these leaves. Instead, I'm glittering all of these, like everything on it, and I'll show you how I'm doing that. And then I'm glittering the petals of here. So um, we'll do that here while we're waiting for that to dry. Taking a little piece of Hydra sponge and my glue, which hopefully doesn't have the pin in it, so hopefully it's going to cooperate for us. Thank you. It was listening. I put lots of glue in here, and I try to push it down into the sponge rather than having a big puddle here on top. That way it doesn't clump on top somewhere with a big puddle in your on your when you're doing a whole surface like this. And let me get a piece of scratch paper. I'm gonna put this over here. And you're just gonna ink up, or ink, glue, put glue on all of it. And then shake on the glitter. Okay, and then you can actually push it down in it once you have a big pile there. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Okay. We'll do that with these guys. There we go. Alrighty. Go ahead and put this back in here. And then we're going to do the same thing with these flowers. On the flowers, I like to kind of put my finger here on the inside curve and it helps me get coverage because I actually on these especially the white ones I really like a lot of glitter because they're white and I want them to shine And actually, I don't mind actually on these getting, because these don't have glitter on the stamens like the other ones do. Let's go ahead and put some glitter on the stamens too. There we go. Doesn't need a lot, but there we go. See that up close? Pretty. All right, we'll do that a few more times. I didn't gl glitter any of these up front or ahead of time, so let me just take me a couple minutes here to get these glittered.
By far, so far, trying out different glitters, Rajni's glitter is my favorite. It lasts forever. As you see here, I'm catching it in a coffee filter. And it pours right back into the container. A container lasts, well, even me as a designer, making a lot of flowers, lasts me over a year. Um, I can't rave about it more. I mean, it, it's gorgeous stuff. It really does. It's worth the pennies. There we go. And then we'll cut off our last one here. One we saved. Let's see how it looks. Seems pretty strong. I'm not going to manhandle it, but I put a lot of glue in there, so it should be okay. And this is the showstopper on the card, so we will douse it up with glue. I like putting my finger behind these petals because it allows me more coverage, but it also helps keep the petal upright and not bend backwards and get flat again. That's another reason I'm putting my finger behind it. Nope, I'm almost out of glitter. Just enough. All right. Creating. Okay. So we will wrap this up. And we will pour it all back in there. And it's ready for another day. Okay, so are we ready? Are we ready? There's some extra leaves that I had pre made. So we've got four leaves here and we have three of these swirls and we have two of these branches and then we have our five flowers so let's build our card okay so I'm gonna get my little Swiffer here real quick and get some of this glitter off. My husband wonders why I always have glitter all over me. Well, I live for glitter, honey. Okay, so how I did this is I started out, this one has a little bend in it, so I think I'm going to put that where it's not gonna be shown as much. So I'm gonna put it that way I'm gonna put this one up this way. I don't wanna cover my happy birthday, so I do wanna make sure that that is off to the side there. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one down here. Okay, then we're going to add a couple of our leaves. We'll put one down and one out. I really want my little yellow buds showing, so I don't want to cover those up. So, but to start with, I'm just going to put two. I just want to get a, a bed to build on, is what I always call it. I want to give a bed to start with. A bed of foliage to build on. Okay. So then, we're going to look at our flowers. 
and I've got two little ones, I've got two mediums, and I've got a large. I don't want my yellow ones right together, and I've got three green and two yellow. So I separated my yellow ones out a little bit and decided to put the medium green next to this larger white one. So let's put these two down first. And I'm gonna give this a good amount. This is our broken one, remember? So I'm gonna give her a good amount of glue. And yes, it's a lot, I know. But I wanna make sure she is not going anywhere. I'm gonna hold her upright and hold her there until she is situated. And you know, I can see down there, and that's gonna bother me, I can see down there where she's broken now. So there, there would be a way to fix that. We could actually put some glue down there and actually add a few little prills if we wanted to. Um, I mean, she's got glue in there holding it, but I can see where the two petals are, are apart. Or I could put glue in there and push her together like that, maybe. Let's get her to stick down first. I might do that. I might put a little more glue and then hold her together. Maybe I'll use dry clear glue after this heat. Because every time you heat, um, you put more, like I just put so much of the hot glue all the rest of the glue in there gets um, hot again. So it can it can soften everything back up, in other words, if it's, it's a lot of hot heat. So let me just see if we're if we're hardening up again here. And then what I might do is come down here with some dries clear and push these two together down where it's broken. See, like that. And that will all dry clear when it's done so you won't see the white petal down there. I'm hoping you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think you can on the camera. You can see where I put that white big glob down there. And of course you can move these and stuff. So even if it wasn't clear, but it will be clear when it's done. And you know, but I think that will just make sure that those petals aren't gonna come apart. I know this is taking up a little bit of time, but hopefully it's, it's a learning process too. So um, all of us have petals that come apart. So, yeah, that actually looks a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead to the next one. And we'll see how she wants to situate in here. And nudge her in there. Maybe downward a little bit. actually holding already. Good deal. Okay. And then we will put one of our little guys down here. Cute. That one coming up a little bit more this time than the last one. And then I think, let's see how I want these. I want some more of these leaves showing. So I think I'm gonna separate these a little bit, like a, like a step ladder, a little bit. That way it separates the, the two yellows and we'll use this guy in between them. Like that.
So they're touching, but they're not clustered, if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm putting that other one up there so I can see what it's going to look like. Kind of move it up so it's facing that way a little bit while it cools. I like the way that big one turned out, the way it looks now. Move that leaf over a little bit so that you can see that leaf. And we'll put that one right down in there. There we go. Kind of have to move it around a little bit until the petals fall in place so they look better. Okay, let's see, let me look at it real quick. Okay, so now what I do is I take these other pieces that I have here and I use them as fillers. And I'm, I might not use them all, and I won't, I, I won't use them all. But what I did on my other card is I took little pieces of them and decided where I wanted to, and it doesn't have to be exactly like the other one, um, but where I wanted to put them. And I like to tear them apart or cut them apart. Like for this one, I think I did something like this and used it in two different places. Um, like tuck something in like this. And then it could actually have this one coming out here. See something like that. I think in this one, I used this part of the swirl in this corner, but you can also use some leaf in that corner. So I'll go ahead and do a little different on this one and take this leaf and maybe tuck it under here. Let's see what that would look like. If it'll go under there, let's see. Yeah, let's see how that would look. Because I also want another leaf under here. To finish this tip out right here. It's getting caught in the fence. Like that. And that one could come over here and stick out right there. So you see, you just kind of put them, put them where you, you feel like it needs something. So I kind of like that right there. So then I just go in and I glue them in. I like that that comes to a point there at the end. Um, and I didn't end up using these three. So let's see, we'll put this one. Under here. And let's say you want this to stick up a little bit. You can always come under here and put a big lump of glue. Well, not always, but. And then get it to stand up. There we go. Gotta let that glue set. And 
And that just gives it a little more dimension where that leaf is gonna, whoops. Being stubborn. Like there's a glue blob there, mommy. There we go. Sometimes it's easier to go in there and push it down. It's like this one here. There we go. Okay, and then we got this one. Which will go down under there, but I need it down far enough to where it does not cover my happy birthday. And I bent it a little bit, but I think it'll be okay. And then that little bit right here. There we go. And there you have it. Got a little bit bent right there. I think it'll be okay though. Like I said, nature. Okay, so that is the finished card. And as you can see, they're both pretty much similar. They're a little bit different. And now let me show you a little bit before we go of the paper collection. I just pulled out some of my favorite sheets here. Um, it's not going to show completely on the screen, but I just wanted to show you the colors more than anything. And um, just so you get an idea of the color schemes. They're very, very pretty, very spring-like. going to be perfect for Easter, Mother's Day. Um gorgeous scrapbook paper layout. Very, very pretty. Um, there's one here. This piece I just thought was gorgeous. And then of course your tag piece is gorgeous. Just to give you an idea of the color schemes. And then before I go, I just wanted to show you a sneak peek of my next card coming out. These are the pink ones that I made. So I hope you like this tutorial and that you will um, enjoy making lilies and that this has helped in some way. And I will see you next time. Thanks a bunch, guys. Bye.